Hello there everybody, this is Krista and welcome back to Crochet Witch Tarot. And today, I wanted to do a VR to a video that Danny Mystic recently put out called, I think she called it, My Quirky Decks. So, this is a video all about the decks that I consider to be in that category of quirky. So, kind of as Danny described it, is these are decks that there's something about them that just is a little bit strange and different to the point where it kind of gives this feeling of just not everyone's gonna really enjoy that deck. Um, and for me, even some of my experiences with these decks is like, I I didn't even like them at first. <laughs> and then something came around where just, I don't know, they started to really work for me. So that's kind of the, the definition I'm working off of here, but I've got quite a few, so I think we should just jump right into it. Starting with the Dame Darcy Witchy Cat Tarot. Now this is one that I really like. I can't say I've used it too, too much though. Look at the backs. Are they not just... <laughs> They're so fun. It kind of gives me like a Sailor Moon type vibe. But I think that the decks put out by Dame Darcy kind of have that quirky feel in general and tend to be the sort where it's like you either love it or you really don't like it. And I think that is especially so with this deck. It is just undeniably strange. We have these anthropomorphic cat people in here mixed in with just kind of regular cats. Um, there's a lot going on in these pictures. The border is really interesting. It's just one that <laughs> just it feels like a wild ride from start to finish. And now that I think about it, it kind of reminds me of that one from Baba Studios, the Bohemian Cat Tarot, just because it's those anthropomorphic cats. And I wasn't sure how I felt about that one, because I was like, ooh, like, I don't know if I like that. Yet here I have this one. <laughs> Very much anthropomorphized cats. And, like, look at this death. Like, what's happening there? So many of these cards, when I use it, it's just that feeling of, like, what is going on? But in the most delightful way to me. But I don't think this is one that I really would just, like, whip out <laughs> for, for anyone because I think this art style to some and, like, the subject matter to some could be kind of off-putting almost. Because it's, it just, the whole thing feels strange. It's got this interesting cat energy mixed with people. The only way to describe it is just it's a wild ride. <laughs> so that is the Dame Darcy Witchy Cat Tarot. Next up, should we just get the other cat tarot out? <laughs> Didn't even realize I had two. The next one I have is the Tarot Cats by Anna Juan. Now this is another one where the artwork is just strange. It really is just strange. But this one, oh my gosh, I love this deck so much. The cat faces all have this similar feel. To me, it kind of looks like they constantly have to sneeze. I don't know. That's just what I get from the, like, style of facial expression here. But this is absolutely one that feels quirky to me in the sense of it just, it has this really kind of strange energy to it. And I would fully believe if there's just plenty of people who see this and are like, oh, like, what's happening there? Do not like. <laughs> like, what? Come, look at their faces. Oh, we gotta focus. Come on. Like, what is happening? This is such a good mood deck for me, though, because the bizarreness makes me laugh every single time. I love the way their facial expressions are drawn. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of, uh, oh my gosh, it's something in Spongebob, but maybe it's when Spongebob gets really dried out at Sandy's house. That's kind of like the facial expression. And so it just, 
makes me laugh every time. So that is Tarot Cats by Anna Juan. Oh, I don't think I said. Um, I kept this at Tarot right now. Um, just because. I think that's what Danny did as well. I think she only showed Tarot decks. And I just had quite the pile already of just Tarot, so we left it at that. <laughs> All right. Next up. Oh, no. Am I going to remember your name? Eek. Oh, no. Okay. I got it. I got it. This is the Zeke's Arcana Tarot, which I love the bag I made. <laughs> My sister dyed this color yarn. It's not even picking up fully on camera because it's such a bright pink. I am obsessed with it. But this is another, I guess not really another, this deck to me feels very um, surreal. That would be the word I have to describe this one. And it's just got this kind of pared down color palette of this bright pink, turquoise, purple, and this peachy color. And I absolutely love it so much. But... It's one of those decks where you really have to take a closer look at each of the pictures because it just really is so bizarre. Like, look at this Four of Cups here. On the lily pad, this arm reaching out, and it's a baby deer on this extended lily pad. It just, it's so much. It's so much going on. And then for the courts, we have these enlarged human busts almost with things coming out of their heads kind of it's it's very interesting but i really love having a deck that just feels really wacky in this way where it's like it can take you so many different directions beyond kind of that rote tarot meaning which i really appreciate this is one that I really enjoy for like dream interpretation work or any sort of like inner world type thing because it's really got that dream like effect where nothing is quite at all realistic. A lot of things are exaggerated or distorted and I just really love this like Candyland type coloring. I don't have any other deck that quite gets this bright so consistently, which I really, really enjoy about this deck. Like, look at this Wheel of Fortune. How cool is that? There's, just, it just feels like there's so much to look at this in this deck. So that is definitely another quirky one: the Zeke's Arcana Tarot. Next up, this is one that Danny mentioned as well, so I chose my different coloring I have on it, of it, and it is the Trionfia della Luna Illustrated Pips, and this is the Aquadoxical version, because I feel like, at least for me, I have the uh, regular coloring as well, but there's something about this aqua color that just makes it even quirkier for me and brings it to this really interesting place that I haven't quite pinned down exactly what that is, but I just really love this Aquadoxical so much. But just as Danny said, I mean, the Deviant Moon style of artwork is really gonna be hit or miss for a lot of people. For me, it is definitely a hit. I really, really love specifically this deck. I used to have a copy of the Borderless Deviant Moon um, that I ended up gifting to Sandy because she was trying to decide if she wanted this deck with the original coloring or that one. And once I got this Trion Fidel Luna in the original coloring, this just, it felt like the Deviant Moon art for me. So I didn't really use that tarot anymore. But I do really appreciate the artwork. Ooh, I'm nervous. Stevie just got up at the window. I'm hoping there's not another cat out there. We've had this cat visiting us so frequently and it's very annoying <laughs> because Stevie is very territorial and since she can't get outside to aggress <laughs> against the cat, 
Um, she likes to displace her anger towards whoever is closest. And it's terrifying. <laughs> so anyway, if I abruptly uh, exit, it's because there's a cat outside that I have to go chase away. Anyway, anyway. Um, this is another one where you really have to pay attention to all the elements of the picture and really take a good few looks, look at it, oh my gosh, good few looks at it, I feel, to really like get all of the details. Now what I will say is that, at least for, to my, for my eyes, the different coloring versions of this deck um i think sometimes can distort the details but since i have the original coloring and used it so much i'm really familiar with the images so i kind of know what's there but i do feel like that original coloring just picks up on the all of the details a bit more but that's besides the point this deck is just so wacky there are just so many things where they shouldn't be, where it doesn't make sense, and like, the facial expressions are so exaggerated, and it just really is such a quirky one, especially I feel in this kind of colorway. It makes it even more, like, almost nightmarish, which I think is really interesting. So, that is the Trion Fidel Luna Illustrated, the Aqua Doxical version. Next up, if I could close this box, you know, later, that's a later problem. Next up, I've got the Lilifer Tarot. Now this is the first version of it. There is a second edition coming out soon um, that was on Kickstarter, which I did not back because I do have and really like this one, um, but I might consider it for the cardstock changes and also for more of the uh, labeling on the minors, because that's kind of what pushes this one really into that quirky territory for me is that not all of the cards are super, super obvious in terms of what they are. I also think that Marion Constantin's artwork is really just in that quirky category for me because it just, I don't know, there's these blobby figures bending around and making facial expressions that aren't really realistic. I feel like it's, I feel like what kind of makes that quirky category for me personally is like images where it's kind of, you have to do a double take to be like, wait, what's going on here? Like in the world, we have these floating eyeballs along with these just swirling people and houses up in the sky. There's just a lot going on that wouldn't really make sense in reality, but it's what I really, really like about this deck. And I love all the colors. It's just one that always seems to make me think, but it really does. Similarly to her uh, Reclaim Oracle, I find that the way she paints really pulls on that emotional realm for me. But... I do feel like when we, you know, we get into this kind of surrealist or, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of abstract artwork. Just naturally, I feel like it's going to be artwork that you either really love it or you really don't. But I really do enjoy how this one reads. But in this original version, sometimes it does take me a second to be like, okay, wait, what card are we talking about here? Because I think some of the numbers are written in like a, an Arabic, I want to say, but that, don't quote me on that. That could be very, very wrong. But yeah, I just think it's really, I love this card. So good. It is a really interesting deck and just kind of reads intuitively in a very interesting way. So that is the Lilifer Tarot. All right, next up, we've got the Wizards Tarot by Wizards of Barge. And this one is just an absolute 
trip <laughs> of a deck. These are the backs, which I love. Everything about this deck is just so wacky and so strange. It really is a quirky one. Like this is just one for me that fits into that category of I couldn't just, if someone was asking me for a reading, chances are I'm not pulling out this one because I don't know, it's just such kind of insane and out there artwork. Like what these different wizards and like goblin type figures are doing. It's totally, I feel like a personal taste thing. And it's not one that I really would make the assumption that someone's gonna like. Um, which, I, what I'm saying that I do not mean like anything negative by that at all. Just more speaking on personal preferences. Because I love this deck. It makes me laugh. I think it's just, it's so wonderfully weird. And it makes me think of the wizard battle in um, Adventure Time. Which I think is what drew me to it to begin with. That kind of wizarding magic world. It reminded me of that. And it just feels like a deck that doesn't take itself too seriously. I love the world it builds. It feels like we're on this whole other planet. It feels very alien-like. But yes, it's definitely a quirky one in my opinion. Because these figures, I could really see how to some people it's just would be totally off-putting. But man, do I like this one. And this is really one that I pretty much only use for myself. And a lot of the times when I'm using it, I'm just flipping through the cards because I just, I love looking at these images. I think they're so funny. So that is the Wizard's Tarot. We're down to our last two now that actually, now that I think about it, kind of have a similar-ish feel to them. I guess I should uh, say too, I'm pretty sure all of the decks I showed so far are in print or with a little for tarot you will be able to get that new second edition I'm sure sometime soon but these last two are unfortunately out of print. Um, with the last one seems to be hope of there being another printing so Keep that in mind. But this one definitely seems to be out of print right now. And that is the Yokai Yo Yochi Tarot. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Apologies if not. But this is one, I'm just double checking my facts here. Yeah, okay. Um, I love the backs of these cards with this moon. But this is a deck all based around Japanese folklore. And to me it really has this very ghostly, kind of in the ether type of vibe to it, which I really appreciate. And I really do actually like this pared down color palette. But it's one that in order I dropped some cards and I don't want to step on them. Okay, in order to, I feel, get kind of the full experience of it, you kind of have to get into the guide to look into the specific folkloric figures in here. And a lot, like, look at the, their sandals with legs. Oh my goodness. This one too is a really cool dream interpretation deck for me. Um, anyway. But as someone who doesn't know too much about Japanese folklore, just already in my brain, this is one that I tend to look at the little guide to see what the, you know, figure is. And then a lot of the times I will look up the story on my own as well to really get the full scope of what's going on here. So this definitely is a quirky one because, you know, it just, it has that kind of quirky look to it. And since it's folklore, you know, stories of that, it's not all gonna completely make sense in a, you know, grounded reality. Like, look at these um, umbrellas that have come to life. They've each got a leg. <laughs> but I just, I really enjoy the images in here and I love using it to learn more about 
that folklore. But I kind of slot it into that quirky category because of the way the artwork is done, but also because not everyone's going to have an interest or be able to kind of place connections with the stories in here. So that is the Yokai Yo Yochi Tarot. Let's get you back in your bag. So you stay nice, nice and safe. <laughs> and last but not least, ooh, excuse my chair noises going on. Last but not least, I've got the Little Monsters Tarot by Peony Archer. Now, the reason I say right now this is out of print, but she did just post on her Instagram that she is finally able to kind of put back into print some of her decks that have been out of print for a really long time. The first one being one that I cannot remember the name of, but it's not this one. But she did reference decks. So I imagine with the kind of popularity of this one, or it feels kind of, I see quite a few people seeking it out. I feel like it will be back in print. So don't quote me on that, but I just feel like if the other one is getting reprinted, this this could be, happen too. But anyway, this deck has each card with its own created little monster. And it's done completely in black and white, which I know is not everyone's cup of tea. It usually is not mine either, but there's something about the creatures made in this deck that I just really connect to. And I really love the guidebook, which you can still purchase on Amazon. So if you're interested in just seeing the guidebook, you can get that separately. Um, which I think, at least for me, I, I had to do that. And like, I had to buy that book separately anyway. So that's where you find that. But it really does feel very different from a standard RWS because it's these characters that are meant to kind of encapsulate that energy rather than showing the full scene. Which, you know, isn't going to be everyone's thing, you know? <laughs> but I really love the voice given to these monsters in the guidebook and just... It's got this real quiet kind of feeling that I really, really like. But it feels quirky to me because all of these characters are just completely made up in the mind of Peony Archer and sometimes they look a little bit nonsensical in this really cool way. I just feel like, look at this one with a huge tail. Just really, really like this one. You've got these like bird people. <laughs> really cool. I'm definitely hoping this one is one of the ones that comes back in print. I just feel like it will. So, fingers crossed for that. But that is the Little Monsters Tarot, and that is the last deck I have to show today. So, I hope you all enjoyed seeing some of my quirky decks, as I would categorize them. And I hope you're having a great start to your weekend. I'll see you again very soon.